What's up, everybody? Uh, this is Jeremiah, and James has been doing this pretty cool series uh, in the Casual Shenanigans Conversations where he has interviewed each of the other hosts about their lives and how they got into gaming and how they came to the podcast and everything else. And uh, so it's now it's James's turn. Yay. Um, and, yay. And being the host of the podcast, or the main host, I guess it, it falls on me to interview James. Well, I say I guess. I volunteered, but... I tried to do it with myself, but it was a little weird. Yeah, yeah. James talking to himself for an hour is a horrifying experience. Uh, <laughs> now Joel, he records Joel could do it well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, well, we've already gotten 20 solid minutes out of Joel before. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm going to interview James. Um, so James, first of all, thank you for doing the interviews with everybody else. Thank you for letting me have that chance. Take, hey, it's been take fun. risk with some ideas. Yeah, I, I, I've thoroughly enjoyed listening to Dave and Joel's, and I've learned stuff about both of them. But I, I listened to mine again when I was editing, and part of me was bummed. I was like, oh, man, like I wish we'd parked here for a little while longer. Like I wish we talked about this more. Like, there's more <laughs> conversations. You, you and I will speak again. Okay. Um, but let's start out. Let's talk about you, James. How, how did you get into gaming? And I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll get the douche <laughs> it warning did, out of the way It start initially. with Pong. Right. I'll get the douche warning out of the way initially. You are older than the rest of us. I mean, you're not that much older than Joel, but you're older than me and Dave by enough of a chunk that your early gaming experiences is going to be significantly different than ours. So I might mention that a few times, but just know that I'm not <laughs> I, picking on your advanced age. <laughs> yeah. I, I know you say that for the air. It's okay. Okay. So uh, how, how'd you get into gaming? So my parents actually had a 2600, um, when I was growing up, I don't, that's an Atari 2600. Mm-hmm, Atari 2600 kids. Okay. Um, when it was still selling new in the store. Um, yeah, pretty old. And so uh, my dad played it. My mom played a little bit too. She had, you know, a couple games that she played. And I guess, you know, just from that, I just started playing and it became kind of my thing. It'll probably be the same way with my son when he, you know, gets older. It's just, you know, dad played this when he was growing up and, now I play it when I'm growing up, so. Um, but yeah, I started out with 2600. And what what yet, games did you have on the 2600? Like any games people younger people would recognize? Well, I mean, I had the crappy Pac Man. I had the you know the crappy ET. I mean, I had pretty much everything out there that you know that was popular at the time. Um, but there were some really good games like um, like Cosmic Arc, which is like a little, just a little like thing that floats down like a little spaceship and you have to shoot asteroids mm-hmm. and you have to go down and like beam up little aliens and stuff. Um, a lot of crappy sports games, but again, at the time they were amazing because yeah, you could move your little fielder and stuff. I mean, what, like how, how would you play? Like were there any baseball games that you have on that? I mean, they I'm had, trying to think what, what games would you have? Oh, let's gosh. I mean, I had uh, for sports, I had football, I had baseball, um, How does football work? Like on the on the twenty six hundred, you have a joystick and one button or two buttons. One button, one button. And okay, so how do you play football with that? It, it's terrible. I, <laughs> I'm trying to remember. It's been so long. I think they all kind of move at the same time. At huh. least on the football game, like your whole your whole defense just goes up in like a line. And down. <laughs> I mean, a, a lot of defensive coaches would probably love that. <laughs> one <laughs> solid wall. <laughs> Baseball was a little more fun, just because. Um, I mean, you were doing the pitching and the hitting and mm-hmm. <laughs> one fielder at a time, like, and then you throw you could choose which base to throw to. I mean, I guess at the time that was pretty advanced. I mean, now you can do that on like a, a watch. Yeah. Um, but I, I think, uh, yeah, I think the, the worst one was probably golf. Um, like I, they just didn't get the mechanic right. Like to swing, you had to like it, imagine like a just like a little full three sixties pendulum, mm-hmm. and so to hit a ball like above your head, like you had to like or imagine a top down, like you're looking completely at a flat thing. You're looking at a guy just completely flat on the ground. Right. So you're hitting the ball. You're like swinging it over top of your head to hit the ball, or you're doing like a backstroke to hit the ball. It's so it was so weird, but <laughs> the, the glory time of the gaming. Um, but what was funny is that the NES came out and, you know, one of my friends got it, but I got the 7,800 when it came out. <laughs> oh, so you, you rode Atari all the way into the dirt then, huh? I did. And then did you skip the 5,200? 
I did skip it. Um, but I thought it was cool because it had like the the voice, like mm-hmm. outfield in, infield out, like just the seventy eight hundred. That was a failure. That sold like less than four million units. Yes, it was a failure. <laughs> I mean, I don't think Atari did much after that until the Jaguar and the Lynx, which were also big failures. Yeah, I mean, it really, Atari after the twenty six hundred was the fifty. Was it fifty two hundred? Fifty two hundred. That- but that was that was kind of a. Um, I don't feel like that was well adopted just because it had the it had the the single joystick and but then it had like a numerical pad underneath. It was really weird. I, you I know just what I'm about? it. Yeah, yeah, it sold 1 million units, so that was definitely like definitely a failure. <laughs> I mean, that's like that's like worse than Wii U failure. Yeah. I mean, it, well, so is the 7800, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um but that but then after that my parents went the Sega route. Like while well, well, my friends all had NES, I had the Sega Master System, which is actually really cool. I mean, it did have some aspects that were better than the NES. I mean, I mean, was that the, that was the last like really popular Sega platform, or with the, with the I guess the Genesis was still popular, wasn't it? Like, yeah, I mean, the Sega Genesis was the I guess one of the bigger like bigger consoles for Sega, and that and the the Game Gear. Um, hmm. but yeah, the Sega Master System was the NES equivalent. But it, I mean, it had some cool. It had some cool innovations. Like it had the three D glasses that you hooked into the system, that just basically made it like the red and blue. I think, or no, I think uh-huh. it, I think I don't remember how it did it. I didn't know that. But um, but yeah, and then then Sega Genesis came. Then I finally got my NES, and then from there, I just pretty much had everything else. So I guess you would have been what um. In middle school, right when the whole PlayStation N64 thing was blowing up? Uh, it might have been end of middle school. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. End of think. middle school, like going into high school. That's like the yeah. prime time to be a gamer. It, it really is. Like I mean, when, when PlayStation came out, N64 was booming, and you still had the SNES was still relevant. You had the Sega Saturn, Sega Genesis. Like that, but that would have been a good time. I had the Sega Saturn. It was quite terrible. I, I, <laughs> well, I mean, but like as far as like the popular, you know, there was all this stuff you could play. Not yeah. saying like it was all great. No, I, oh, I, the Saturn, I'm, the Saturn I'm very was happy more, to. Yeah, go ahead. I'm very happy to have been you know a kid during like the SNES period because mm-hmm. I think that was like one of the just I think it was one of the best systems that have been out. Just because, oh, yeah, the you, know, you, see, you see a lot yeah. of games out now that kind of emulate that stuff. You look at you know Axiom Verge, that's kind of you know emulating that that Metroid type game and you see how the game metroidvania type games and stuff and so we see a lot of throwbacks to you know snes nes period so i'm i'm, I'm happy to have to have grown up at that time uh, but it's also cool to be old enough to have seen the atari 2600 you know three colors on the screen if if that to then seeing you know a cd-rom based thing which you know when 3d came out it was like wow that's amazing not really mm-hmm. but um <laughs> But, you know, when the PlayStation came out and then, you know, seeing the N64 and actually seeing it leap into the 3D, you know, it was kind of cool. It's it's cool to have been old enough to have recognized the, you know, that technological advancement. I mean, what, like, what was your first thought when you, what was the first 3D game you saw? First fully 3D game? Oh, man. I don't remember the first. I mean, there were some there were some old like PC games that were oh, okay. pseudo 3D. They were kind of cool. Like there was some kind of tank game or something. I, I mean, did even, you play? Did you play like Super Mario 64? I did near launch. I mean, okay. I mean, that was amazing. That was obviously you know for a, a lot of people that's like their first one you know that they see. You know, I'm, I'm thinking though. Like, I mean, I played. I mean, if, if if you count something like Wolfenstein as 3D, I mean, it at least felt like 3D. Mm-hmm. I mean, it wasn't like the full interaction of moving your camera around and stuff, but it, it was cool to, like, you're not just looking at a side, you know, sprite. You're actually navigating your way through things. Not very right. well, but I'm trying to think. Um, I, actually, there, there are a couple of SNES games that, they were, that were, you know, moving to 3, but I, but I also played... Um, Quake on PC and uh, Unreal Tournament, um, mm-hmm. which is uh, I, I don't I don't know off the top of my head what the the years they came out were, but I feel like that was actually a better representation of 
moving into 3D for me, sitting in like a you know computer lab at you know local college with a friend of mine who worked there at the time, and just mm-hmm. with like you know six other guys or seven other guys playing like a little uh, quake tournament or something like that. I mean, that was actually my first real like, man, 3D is amazing. So I mean, of course, you know, the 64 is awesome too, and there were some cool you know innovations on that. But I think that I think that would actually be my my aha moment when you like you first realized that gaming was going to be big for you well no, at that point you already been gaming for no, like no, 10 no, I, years yeah thank you uh, <laughs> no it was no it was just like holy cow you know things are changed okay you know, progress this is, is this is the future that yeah. feeling mm-hmm. okay so uh what was one of your most memorable gaming experiences and you have a lot to choose from I would say one of my most memorable game experiences was a friend of mine bought Super Mario 3 when it came out. Mm-hmm. They'll let you know how old I am. Um, and I, I stayed over at his house like every night for an entire weekend. And I, he, like he had like unlimited playing stamina. I would just like fall asleep like halfway <laughs> through. But he, you know, just finishing through that. Um, it was fun. I mean, obviously, that was an amazing game, and it still holds up really well. But just, you know, having that person-to-person game experience. But also, I mean, everybody says Halo, but, you know, that really was a big, big part of, you know... It, it's, it, was, it was weird, because, you know, you know, gaming is kind of a... I, I like gaming, but I don't know if I want to tell everybody I like gaming, because it is a little bit on the nerdy side. But then when mm-hmm. you have, like... Less, less now, less these days. When you have ten guys together playing Halo, it's like... yeah. Okay, I feel a little validated. I mean, that's cool that ten of my friends, or you know, however many we we had. Well, and Halo hit kind of the bro sphere of gaming the same way Call of Duty and Madden does. Like, you can think gaming's dumb, but you play Halo or you play COD. You know, like you still play that every year, even if people don't play games, quote unquote. Yeah. So, because there are cultural experience more. Like when Halo One came out, you would have been what, like in high school, or would you were you already in college? I'm trying to think. I think it was like right at the, like the, I think I just graduated maybe. From high school? Mm-hmm. Let me see. Let me see. I don't remember when I graduated. 96. Oh, yeah. No, it came out in 2001. Oh, that's right. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, um, when, uh, Halo came out when I was obviously in college. Um, and was that a big thing on your hall? Yeah, I, I didn't really play much. I mean, I... I in college, I traveled a lot. Um, mm-hmm. I did, you know, music, and we did recruiting for the college. So we actually ran around to different places and recruited and stuff. So I spent a lot of time on the road. So I actually didn't do much gaming in college. Um, I think I had a couple systems still, but I don't really remember even getting a chance to play. But you know, when we go home during the summer, you know, that was the time to, you know, go over to a friend's house and play or, you know, play at home or stuff. So I think it was just kind of like a, like a summertime thing for me. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was me a little bit. Like when I was working a lot, like near the end of high school before I went to college, I played games like when I could get around to it. Mostly, you know, I played music and stuff. Like I still liked gaming, but it was more like pushed to the background. It sounds like same thing for you. Yeah. Like it was something I liked, but it just practically it didn't happen a lot. Anymore. I mean, I also was into dating a lot back then, so <laughs> I mean, I guess that kind of took precedence too. That's a funny way to say it. Into dating, into one particular person, or just dating? I just, I mean, yeah, I oh, you dog! Ah, I don't playing that go. field. Mm. I don't want to go that deep now. <laughs> Um, faithful so, dating. We'll say that I was faithful, always faithful. Oh, that's I, I assumed everyone would have assumed <laughs> that, but that's good to throw out there. This feels like this is a bad segue, but it's honestly the next question I had. Um, <laughs> you have kids. <laughs> uh, you're the only one of us who has kids. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it, providing Joel doesn't have a bunch of illegitimate children via a bunch of old women somewhere in the U S which wouldn't surprise me. But um, how did your gaming habits change when you had kids? Because everyone knows they do. Like, you can't be the same selfish, hardcore gamer, you, you know, you might might have been in the past when you have uh, little humans that depend on you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, there's the not wanting to play violent games in front of them or anything like that. Uh, mostly it's after they get to bed, 
you know, if mm-hmm. I'm going to take a chance to play, um, that's what I'm going to do it. And, you know, more so if it's either a game that I can spend a little time doing to just get a fix or if it's, you know, hanging out with a group. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I would say that what changed the most, I think, is... I, you know, taking a different approach to gaming. Like I still, I'm still, you know, very much into the, you know, the genres of gaming that I've always been into, but I do try to find games that, you know, my son might be interested in. And I find just as much fun finding games for us to play together. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, that's not all that all I do with him. It's not, you know, like sit him down in front of the TV and play games all day, but right. But it's, it's something fun you enjoy. And if he yeah, enjoys I mean, it, it's fun to do together. I mean, he, he loves it. He loves to play with me. You know, he feels big when he's playing a game, whatever. Um, so, I, so I do get that enjoyment out of that. Just, you know, kind of playing very casually. Um, but yeah, after they go to bed, if I, you know, if I have any free time left, um, that's when I'll play. But I mean, in the past, I've been, you know, in school, you know, mm-hmm. I was taking master's classes and trying to work full time and, you know, had two kids and that was just overwhelming so you know there was a period where i was just like okay this is way too much something's got to go and it's not going to be gaming so <laughs> bye well, kids that, <laughs> that, that, that's an unfortunate choice a lot of us make something's got to go all right health it's been nice it's been real <laughs> <laughs> sleep nice knowing you what's funny i mean maybe i'll take this personal um okay well yeah we should this is all about you but I deal with, you know, I deal with sleep issues. I have narcolepsy mm-hmm. and I deal with other sleep issues that just, I'm just generally tired. Night terrors. <laughs> I do a little walking in my sleep, you know, no, I'm mm-hmm. just kidding. But, you know, that's been a major factor in, you know, how I play and what I play and that, you know, that kind of also changed, you know, me as a gamer, I think. Um, like for a while, like that couch experience if i could recline playing mm-hmm. a game i'm almost gonna get drowsy almost always mm-hmm. and so you know i think that led more to me playing pc games with everybody and that you know sitting in that really uncomfortable chair you know sitting at you know sitting upright and you know being focused on being with friends you know that actually right. keeps me alert keeps me attentive you know whereas you know i play i can play something like I think I was playing Halo Four for the first time, and I'm you know I'm driving like the little warthog, and I'm like driving it. I, I realize I'm driving into the wall because I'd fallen asleep, <laughs> which is funny, you know. So, so I've had to you know work around. That. I mean, of course, I have medicine that that helps with that, but you know, it it does affect the level of attention that I can give to certain games if there, there's not you know a certain amount of engagement. Then it's probably something I won't play at this point. Like I can sit and play Trials Fusion for hours and hours. <laughs> yeah, but, but that's like the king of just one more. All right, let me just try again. All right, right. just one more. But if I, you know, if I, you know, I play a game like Skyrim. You know, I'm playing for a while and I'm, you know, doing these quests, and it's just like I start to get tired. I'm just like, you know, there's not something going on, so it, it just it's it, it's it's easy to get out of that game experience if you've you know too many times you've had to quit because you're falling asleep. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, hopefully, I mean that didn't happen with Fallout at all, luckily. But you know, I, I do, I do try to choose games that I, I can at least get in and put some time in and enjoy that amount of time, and you know, not feel like completely lost getting back into it. Mostly because of that, because you know, if I'm I'm sitting, you know, on the couch, you know, reclined or whatever. I, I make the assumption that I'm probably going to get tired if it's a certain kind of game. So, I mean, so you had a question you asked everyone else. Uh, do you have any gaming quirks, like a certain snack you like to eat, dim lit room? Would it be safe to say some of your quirks are you don't like kick back quite like the rest of us do? Yeah, I can't. Uh, like, I I can't just sit back and play. Like, uh, Joel has an amazing ability to just sit and play games mm-hmm. for hours on this couch, which is fine. Um, but I just, you know... When people, you know, he's asked, you know, how much time have you put in this game? I'm like, ah, not that much. I mean, it, and of course, of course, part of that's being busy, but then again, it's part of, I, I'm going to choose an activity that's 
either going to keep me awake or choose an activity that I, since I know I'm going to fall asleep, I might as well choose an activity like a TV show that's just going to allow me to check out a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah I, I mean, I, I like, everybody likes pizza and <laughs> soda when they're playing games. I mean, I guess that's, yeah, that's no big surprise. Um, yeah, I mean, I would say one of my gaming quirks would be I yeah I have to I have to sit up right when I'm playing certain games or I'm gonna fall asleep so mm. it's always you know the erect position which I just you know invested in a nice chair for the for the office and so I can enjoy PC gaming a little bit longer yeah and, and do you feel uh, like PC gaming is helpful because generally like you've got more light coming at you closer from the computer screen and most people keep their office a little better lit like stuff like that. Do you feel like that helps with that or is it just different? It, again, it's, it, it's, I mean, I do keep my, my office a little more dim lit, um, mm-hmm. but I don't know. There's something, there's something about sitting like, uh, you know, literally a couple feet away from your monitor as opposed to, you know, TV, you know, being many feet away. Um, before I moved, I had my TV mounted up above my, you know, fireplace. And I was so far away that I just, I, I didn't have that in, it's, it's weird, I didn't have that engagement. And so I was more inclined to not get that much into it. But like, if I put the, you know, the couch close to the TV, you know, surprisingly, I would be, you know, more into it, more, you know, attentive. And I think that's, one of the benefits of PC gaming is that you're literally right at your monitor. That's so, that. That's one thing I, I noticed when I was at John's house was like his TV is all the way across his living room. And I've sat down and I've tried, but like I used to do that. We had like a 27 inch TV growing up in our basement and I would sit on the couch and play for hours. But like, I just physically can't do that anymore. Yeah, it's I just, think maybe yeah, it's just something just you just don't connect with for some reason. Yeah. It feels like it's just like, it's hard to even concentrate. And I know, I'm spoiled with my screen, but like, <laughs> but, but really you get used to it. And it's like, no, this that feels right at that point. Um, and, and it's hard to engage with it. And that's one thing I do like about PC gaming is I'm, it feels like I'm right here, you know, I'm right here in front of it. It's not like across the room or anything. I'm right here next to it. Yeah. The but, only, the only complaint I have about, you know, PC gaming other than, you know, it's, the conditions of your living room, are obviously probably you, a little bit better than your, you know, a, a, an office or spare bedroom or whatever, just because, you know, usually the living rooms are more open, so it's more cool, mm-hmm. all that stuff. It's more convenient to get to snacks and stuff. But um, I, I wish my monitor was a little bigger. I, I might, that might be something that's in my, you know, future. What's that? Um, what, what are you rocking now? I just have a 24 inch 1080 monitor. Yeah. So I think I mean, might, that's, that's respectable. It is, but I think it might jump up a few inches just to get that, get the, you know, the more engaged experience. I, I, I mean, you're gonna make the 1440 P 27 inch bump. Uh, eventually. eventually. I mean, that's a good bump. If you want to go up from where you are now, that's the only real bump. Like you don't want to get a 27 inch 1080 P I have one. And eh, the pixel pitch, it seems to be really noticeable. Yeah. I mean, although if I could have a projector on my wall that covered the entire wall, mm. that would be, that would be the ideal. I'm sure. A deal immersion. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you've kind of touched on this a little bit, but what hobbies do you have outside of gaming and the podcast? Like pretend like this, this isn't your entire life is this podcast. Um, what else do you like to do? <laughs> well, let me list my kids hobbies. No, I'm <laughs> that um, would be the stereotypical dad thing to say. Like, Oh, what am I into? <laughs> let me see. Uh, what are my kids like? <laughs> I like food that's half eaten. I like picking stuff up. Um, I like my ears ringing at the end of the day. <laughs> it's great. Um, you know, I, I mentioned, you know, traveling uh, with music. Um, I've sung quite a few years. Um, that was... I, like in a band or like I, I've done. I've done a little of everything. I'm, I, in high school, I actually played guitar in a band. Just, mm-hmm. just a couple of friends, like some of my best friends. And we had this really cool... I called it cool. Maybe it wasn't so cool, but we were a little bit, a little bit off the alternative path. Um, it was, it was fun. Um, 
I wasn't that great at guitar, but I mean, everybody wants to play guitar in a band once they get a guitar. So, um, and then I, you know, I, I, my senior year in high school, I sung in choir. Um, I'd already been singing, like I, it, it pretty much self-taught. I didn't do vocal lessons or anything like that. Oh, you're you're really good for someone who's self-taught. Well, I practice a lot. I'm a perfectionist. I, I, I know. I'm, I know. Being, being a perfectionist, I think, takes you to that that what can I do to get here, you know? Right. Um, but I sang, you know, in, in high school choir, which is a lot of fun. And that was kind of my first real experience doing like the traveling thing with a group, which, mm. which I mean, really wasn't like the kind of traveling I did in college. But um, then I went to uh, a college in Kentucky for a year and uh, sang for them on a scholarship. Um and then ended up transferring back to the place where I was from and uh, went there and also on a, on a music scholarship, not, not a scholarship for the degree, but on a scholarship for recruiting the group that I was singing with. Right. And so it was uh, four vocalists in a band and we traveled and it was just, it was amazing. Like I loved being on the road uh, and I loved being on stage and it, it's weird because it, it, people know that I'm pretty introverted. Um, but like there, there's just, there's something different about being on stage and, oh, I, thousands, I, and being fronting for yep. thousands of people. It's yep. like, I might not be able to talk to 10 people in a room, but I can sing in front of 10,000 and feel comfortable just because I, I you know, for me, it, you know, when I was as a musician, I'm comfortable with my gift. Right. I'm not necessarily comfortable with my ability to quickly, you know, pull together, you know, words or something, whatever. But when you're, when you're that, when it, the scale gets that much bigger, you don't feel like you're, they're judging you closely. Right. Um, I, where, I totally get what you're saying. I, I had like, I used to be very introverted and I, I couldn't get up in front of people and talk at all. But if I had my guitar on, like it was fine, you know, it didn't yeah. matter how many people there were. I was there to play guitar. Like, you know, I, I know I'm going to, I'm going to kill it. And someone else has to talk into a mic and I don't care how many people are here. Yeah, I definitely get that. It's, it's a big thing. Uh, before I go into my other hobbies, I'll tell, um, yeah, I, I, in that, and you know, my personality is not one to look for attention, which right. is weird because, you know, you know, after you're done doing the concert, you know, people come up and say, Oh man, you're amazing. Blah, blah, blah. And I'd like shy away from that. Mm -hmm. Like I'd almost not want people to come up. Like, I'm fine with them acknowledging that it was good, but just don't actually be the one to tell me or, you know, directly tell me. Yeah. Well, um, how, how are you supposed to like take compliments like that? Like you just smile, cheesily and go, Oh, thanks. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, yeah. It, and it's just like, I feel awkward. I feel, you know, I want to know that I did well. Right. Almost just for my sake. Mm -hmm. And I want to, I want, to, I want people to acknowledge that I did well, just not, directly like i'd rather my friends say oh yeah they they said you're amazing i'd rather <laughs> that happen um because then it brings it on that personal level where it's n no longer the you know the the instrument that i'm projecting it's the person behind the instrument and it's like you know maybe that's the area that i'm not comfortable with but um in that you know a couple of things that you know that were funny about that is that you know i was more inclined to do things that were just kind of crazy when I was on stage, mm -hmm. you know, that, you know, not being an attention seeker, but so I'm, I'm picturing you know, like you're naked, like biting the heads off animals, like dumping no, but, gasoline but, on you. Oh no. no. Okay. But standing on a speaker stack and singing okay. or crowd surfing or okay, so the alt band stuff. dancing or dancing on stage in front of people. I mean, that's just, yeah, I'm honest. I can't picture you dancing. I, I actually can dance. I used to dance a lot, actually. I mean, but, I um, believe, I believe you. It's like, I believe that that's a stage thing. Cause like I, I, as your personality as it is, I don't think you just get up and dance in front of people like on a whim, like in front of a group of friends or something. Well, it, yeah, I mean that's the thing. I wouldn't do it in front of a group of friends, but it's funny. Like at concerts, I would dance, and like it's just it was weird. Um, but one of the stories um, in dancing was that um, we were playing a, <laughs> a, if this dates it, a ska song, um, <laughs> <laughs> and I was dancing you know, skanking. And I kicked the saxophone player in the, in the bottom of the saxophone 
It like went up and hit Wait, him in the tooth. <laughs> you kicked all the way up to the bottom of the saxophone. Yeah. All right. It was, it, you it was were really skanking. I was. I was. I was really into it. But um, <laughs> I just like I just stopped and I saw him like pull it down and like touch it to where his tooth was and like have this like horrified look on his face. I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, another another random experience from that um like i you know generally don't drink soda before you go out and sing but i did like to drink like sprite because it was mm-hmm. a, at least a colorless soda and caffeine free um i was about to go on stage and i guess it gotten shaken up a little bit and uh it like sprayed a little bit and got mm-hmm. on like the front of my pants like right before i was about to go on stage oh and I'm like, oh my god! I, I, I mean, I'm like literally sitting in front of near, in front of a bunch of people. Yeah, like, like on the front row. I and mean, it's not like I was facing them, but I was on the front row. And so I knew I was had to go on stage in like ten minutes. I'm like very, very discreetly, like trying to dry my pants with like my thumb and my pointer finger, just like <laughs> sitting there. It's so awkward, but. Everything worked out. It got dry. I guess I'm assuming no one noticed. So, you just um, play it off. Got it. Got to have that ultimate confidence. <laughs> my uh, my other my other hobbies. Uh, you know, really, I'm really into you know, science. Like I I love learning about it. I love um, discussing it with people. I love debating it. I love you know every aspect of it. Um, I it, it I don't even know if it's something that. I'm necessarily even that great at like, I mean, I took classes in school and stuff, but obviously I didn't, I didn't study that in college. Um, mm-hmm. if I could go back and do it all over again, I probably would have, but <laughs> at your college, no, um, I would find a college that was really geared towards like you know, a, a technical, a technical school or something or, well, yeah, I, mean, would I, you, I mean, well, MIT or something, you know, something small. <laughs> <laughs> what, what would you have done? Like, um, would you have gone with a different degree? Like if you, cause you like science so much now, what would you have done differently in college? Like what would you have studied? If, if I had a better foundation as a high school student, like I had oh, okay. a, a, you know, I, my parents weren't that involved with my high school and I, this isn't being like a arrogant jerk, but I was really, really smart, mm-hmm. but I was very, very lazy at the same time. Like, mm-hmm. I just, I was so bored in my classes that I just didn't do any of the work. And that, I mean, that literally in that, that and dating in high school were kind of the, the big d- distractors. And so, I mean, obviously it's, it's, it, it falls on my lap as to why I didn't do that great, but it just, you know, if, 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 if I had a different scenario, I would probably go into something like neuroscience or I don't know, astrophysics or something. Oh, oh, just astrophysics or something? Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, if, if, I mean, if I, I, if I had a choice, I, I mean, I love the medical field, mm-hmm. and I love the brain. I just, I think it's fascinating. I think it's something that you know, just f- fully undiscovered, and that it's, it, it's, it's one, the one of the medical fields that affects so many people that they just don't realize it. So, yeah, it's cool though. Yeah, so, what else do you like to do? Like, I like to hang out you, with you guys. Oh, you're like me though. You live a couple hours away from the rest of the group. Yeah. So it's so, it's a it's an event. <laughs> so that when, means you like you out. like driving. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't like driving either. Remember that narcolepsy thing? Yeah. Well, um, you do like cars though. I do like cars. Um, I, I was actually a lot more into it when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, like I loved cars. Like Lamborghini Countach was like the car. Oh, I mean, I yeah, think everybody had that fantasy, but it was like. Well, you know, I, I'm a little pictures. younger. It was the Diablo, but yeah. <laughs> uh, well, you know, someone had to be a trailblazer for you. Um, yeah, I, I like cars. I mean, I've had a couple cars that you would consider, you know, sports cars. And I've had a Mustang. I've had a Camaro. Um, uh, you know, unfortunately, with <laughs> with kids, you're like, does it get great gas mileage? And is it safe if it rolls over? And so, I mean, there's that. Um, well, but you ended up with the RSX, which is, that's a fun car. It's a fun car. It's a, it's a peppy little car, but I mean, I got it mostly for it, you know, it's great on gas mileage and it's going to last forever. So, and yeah. you know, I traded in, I got rid of the Mustang convertible for that. 
Mm-hmm. So it was kind of a, to me, it, it felt like a step down. Oh, it was the biggest step you were willing to make at the time? Yeah, I mean. Hmm. I, I appreciate you not selling out and getting a minivan. I know way too many people who have one or two kids who are like, oh, but you just need all the extra room, and they just immediately get a minivan. Like, uh, they can drive separately. Or I got a <laughs> U-Haul or something to pull. <laughs> What's, I mean, kids don't need, like, that much stuff. Like, if they need a minivan worth of stuff, you might be spoiling your kids <laughs> if they if they can't ride in a more normal vehicle. Yeah, no. In hindsight, though, probably a two-door car wasn't a great idea. I, I can see that. Now, um, were both your kids in car seats when you got that, or were they already out? They were both in, they were both in car seats. I mean... They, I mean, they stay in car seats for a long time. Oh yeah, that's right. Because you got to be in a booster seat until you're what, yeah. like eight now. But more like dealing with like, you know, a little little kid, you know, getting them in and out. I mean, the you know my my son's luckily old enough to be able to buckle my daughter in. So mm-hmm. I was like, all right, buckle her up. He's like, no, dad, you do it this time. Nope, I'm gonna turn the air on. Got to get it cool in the car for us. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah. I would I would like to spend more time in cars, you know, as a hobby, but it's just not enough feasible. So I can at least, at least live vicariously through those that that still do it enjoy was, the enjoy the hobby. It was like a real I, weird. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. It was a real weird thing for me when I, I just got the first fun car I've had in a long time, and it was so weird just working on it and getting back on the road. It was like, oh yeah. <laughs> this is what I've been missing this whole time. Like, Oh, it, like it was a wonderful feeling of being back of like, Oh man, I remember why I like this so much. Like it, my car's you're not, not fast. You're not old enough to be having that experience. <laughs> but my first, yeah, my, I mean, you're, you're not old enough to be saying oh, my first, this is what it was like. My to have first fun. car was a, was a E 36, three series though. Yeah. Right. So well. like I started with one of the best four door chassis that's ever been made. The E 30 would have been better, but no airbags. Um, but the E36, like I started with that and like, I knew driving all my other friends' cars was like, this is garbage. This is garbage. Cause all my friends, like they got, you know, mid nineties, Mustang V6s and civics and eclipses and like all that other stuff and driving that and then driving my BMW. I was like, oh yeah, like this is just a way better car in every possible way. But then I sold that and got a Tercel <laughs> and like, I knew, I knew I, I downgraded you downgraded, but at the same time, you found probably one of the most reliable cars ever oh. made in history. Oh, dude, that I, I that car will always have a special spot in my heart. We bought it like 150, 160,000 miles, and I put 500 bucks of maintenance into it the first week. Like, you know, pads, rotors, struts, axles, oil change, all the fluids changed, all for less than 500 bucks, plugs, air filter. And we drove it for, I guess, like 65 or 70,000 miles, um, most of which was in two years. It was like just our commuter vehicle. It Mm -hmm. leaked a little bit of oil the entire time. Had a check engine light the entire time because it's a mid-90s Toyota. So it was unhappy about the O2 sensor. Uh, And then got 40 miles per gallon the entire time and never broke. That's amazing. Yeah, actually, yeah, obviously, I mean, I had a Tercel, so that, I mean, that's yeah. where I come from and, you know, saying like, it was such a great car. In, like, in, in some ways, it's such a pure car. Like there's literally, there's not one ounce on that car that is not a hundred percent necessary for getting down the road. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw the one that I had, I saw on the side of the road and it had $650 written on the window. Okay, so <laughs> we'll talk them down to 600 but the engine had already, I think, I think the engine had been rebuilt and like any kind of maintenance stuff had been done. I mean, that's a pretty good deal. So literally the only thing I did in the life of the car was change out the tires, which at the time, I think it was like merchants or something like that. It was $25 a tire. Oh, installed. geez. For new tires? Yeah. So it, was, <laughs> you know, it probably warped my sense of buying tires for the you know future generations, but yeah. I, that was literally that and like the oil and stuff like that. That was the only thing I ever did to the car, you know, to, to keep it running. Like, and then I sold it to a friend to get more, you know, more adult, you know, car and it, then they wrecked it. But I'm sure it's still running. But. When your kids are a little bit older, is there like a car you have in mind, like a car that's modern now that you're thinking, Hey, when that gets older and cheaper and the kids get a little bit older, I'd like to own one of those. I mean, my son wants me to get another Mustang really badly. 
mm-hmm. and I and I I'd rented one, um, gosh, like a year ago, uh, when I couldn't drive my Acura, um, I, like like over a weekend, and like they loved it. I was like, oh my gosh, like the little side panels light up and stuff like that. <laughs> I don't know if I'd necessarily want a Mustang again. Like, well, what about like, like a more I, family friendly, fun car, like a WRX or a Mazda six or a Mazda three wagon or something like one of those, you know, fun, but sensible cars. Yeah. I mean, I would consider something like that. I, I mean, I think, and Subarus are so hard though to, to get the hold their value. So well, it's so hard. WRX is hard. If, if you want like an Impreza, like a regular Impreza, those are easy. I do want a nice. Of course you do. Everyone wants a WRX. (laughs) I'm just saying like, there's a reason I ended up with a regular Impreza. (laughs) I looked and looked and looked. I was like, well, this isn't completely destroyed. We'll take this one. (laughs) Yeah. It's been a great car, but, but every time I'm actually accelerator, I'm like, it could have been, it could have been. I mean, I mean, honestly, I don't think my primary car would be ever like a little fun car. I think I would probably still go practical. Yeah. Definitely something with four doors. Yeah. Next time, but I think you know I would you know have that like that 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 standard like this is going to get me to work and back and get the kids wherever they need to go safely and blah 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 go out of town whatever, and then get like a little something to build up. I you know I I, I don't have the time to actually build up a car and you know work on. It. I don't actually have the know how that well. I mean, literally when I've had to do anything, I've sat with my phone on YouTube and just done it. <laughs> Oh, well, there's the no fly. shame. There's no shame there. I'm I, by that standard. I'm an IT guy. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, I, yeah, I don't know what I'd want. I'd, I'd want something, I'd, I'd want something s- small and peppy, um, mm-hmm. but something a little bit more horsepower. I think, I don't know if I would, I don't know. So you I want a Miata. S- that's what you're saying. No, nah, I don't want a Miata. I don't want to be that guy. Uh, <laughs> Everybody's that guy. I'm too old to be that guy. But then get a spider. Join me. Um, get maybe, we'll get a sp- maybe we'll get a spider. We can take pictures together. And uh, no, no, that's no, <laughs> <laughs> no. Come on, we can we can have meetups and stuff. <laughs> no, nah, I'm good. You should get you should get like a 350Z convertible. That could, that could be fun. That could be fun. I drove one of those. Uh, and I was although I think shopping. I would I think I would want to go like 80s. Oh, something, okay. something older, something to be like. Oh, the 300ZX then. T tops, yeah. early 90s. It's, yeah, just just something that's like that's set enough apart that yeah, you know, I mean, it's it's when something gets far enough removed, it becomes cool again. Yeah, what's well, that's, well that. that, that's like so for I would go I would go nineties just because you have airbags and analog brakes and stuff. Um, but like the the original MR two and the second gen MR two, those would be fun. Uh, a three hundred ZX, that'd be cool. Don't get a Fox body Mustang. We're no, no longer friends if you get a Fox body Mustang. Or you know uh, the the car that I loved growing up. Yeah. Um, what was the? It was a, it was a Mazda. RX seven. Uh, I think it was the RX seven. Not the MX six. Let me try. That was like, think. It, that was like it was it was it was older. It was kind of it kind of like had the the really old Porsche like um, curvature to it. Not not the like the nine eleven, but like the uh, the nine four four. I, or or the nine whatever you, the the Porsches that weren't nine elevens, yeah, the Porsches that were kind of yeah the Porsches that were a little more elongated like it sounds the, like you're talking about one of the older RX sevens then like yeah, the late eighties RX sevens yeah it kind of had that curvature to it that was kind of the the first time I was like whoa that's you know it's a really cool car of course I was pretty young so hey but you, when cool you know you know yeah yeah you know <laughs> um. Are you going to be asking any PC questions? Because I do have a do have a story for that. Yeah, go ahead and you tell your story. Not thought to, might not have thought to ask. I, I mean, I, I had some even some more questions I was going to ask, but yeah, you got a story. Let's hear it. I was going to steer us off of cars at some point. Um, <laughs> but I, you're, I don't have that many other people to talk cars with, so I'm going to get it while I can get it. <laughs> I, I I was telling Joel this the other day. Um, I didn't have my first PC. Like I didn't actually own a PC until I was 21. My parents just did not have computers growing up, and uh, so I, it, what year were you twenty one? That's like early two thousands. Um, let's see. I graduated in eighteen ninety six, so I don't know, three years after that, or I mean four years after that, three years. God, so, so around like ninety nine two thousand. Yeah, uh, I mean, ninety nine so ninety nine ish. 
they're they're behind the curve a little bit, but like not that bad. But they, did, I mean, it it was way after. I mean, they didn't have a computer. Like I got a hand me down computer. Oh, okay. So I mean, it wasn't them. It was like when I was at college, I had a computer. Um, I think it was like a compact or something like that. Something Ugh. amazing. Oh yeah, yeah. a compact around the year two thousand. I bet that was amazing. Uh, the the beige is just sexy. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I mean, it's weird because I loved computers. Like I loved going to friends' houses and playing games and I played, you know, I mean, when you put my age to it, I mean, playing games off floppy disk and, you know, booting them in DOS and stuff and, you know, learning, you know, the DOS commands and stuff like that. And so that was kind of a cool thing to also see the, you know, the evolution of, computer gaming and computers and just in general, like seeing the first windows 3.1 and, you know, saying, Whoa, it's got like this cool interface and stuff. And then, you know, which was cool. But from, from the age of 21, like three years later, like when I actually owned a computer, I was doing PC repairs and uh, doing installations for customers when I worked at circuit city, like this Mm -hmm. is before they actually, actually had a service. Like, you know, people would bring their stuff in and I would just offer to do it for them just because, you know, we liked our customers and stuff. And <laughs> this that was the old Circuit City, obviously. Doing, started Geek Squad and stuff. So Circuit City was trying to do their counterpart. Yeah. And so we were one of the first stores to, to do any kind of, like, legitimized price guide or pricing scheme for, you know, installations and stuff like that. And so just a little random, real, little random story. So mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that, I, that's I, cool, I, though. And I've built a few computers since then. And it was cool because, you know, working at Circuit City, we had like the, all those little backdoor, um, uh, different, uh, vendor discounts and stuff. Uh huh. Like if you did, like if you go to their, their website and do like training courses and stuff like that. Oh you, yeah. You, know, you get stuff at like a ridiculous deal. And so of course I got like a ton of Microsoft games and a ton of, you know, games like that. But, uh, one of the ones I did was for AMD and, I got the AMD 64 when it first came out. That was the second 64 bit processor. Mm -hmm. The second, that was the second computer I built. The first computer I built had a Duron in it. Mm -hmm. I think it was a Duron. No, 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 no. Did it have a Duron? Anyway, I think it might've been an Athlon. Um, Anyway, but you know, that was, I was like, Oh my gosh, it's a 64 bit processor. You know, it was like, (laughs) what a difference it it didn't make. (laughs) Yeah. It it, 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 it pretty much did nothing. I mean, it was a fast processor. It played games really well you know, matched with a, you know, decent graphics. I don't remember what I had back then. Right. Um, Probably a voodoo or something. No, that was a little past the voodoo time. Oh yeah, that's true. It, been- it was, it was an NVIDIA. Um, I just don't remember what model it was, but yeah. So I actually, you know, from that, that first computer at 21, then building two computers by the, you know, by 24, uh, that was kind of like the, okay, this is, you know, this is actually something that's interesting to me. And then, you know, just, I think I spent more time fixing other people's problems that helped me learn, like, you know, uh, removing viruses and installing crap for people. Right. You know, it was more interest than me even tinkering for myself. I mean, luckily I didn't deal with viruses that much. So are you, um, like how many computers did you build? Did you keep building them every couple of years or did you kind of taper off as you went through college and got a little I older? tapered off when I went through college. Um, Cause you weren't, you weren't gaming that much. You were doing, a little, I wasn't, ga- I stuff. wasn't gaming that much. I mean, I think my primary focus was, I mean, just something to have for college, something that worked. And I think my, I think my 64 lasted quite a while for what it was. I mean, I would say it was ahead of the curve, but at the time it was a, I think it was like a three gigahertz processor. Or it was, <laughs> I mean, a, there was ain't a, bad. I mean, yeah. I mean, at the time it was like, Whoa, you know, and then AMD back then just, I, I, I don't know. I think Andy's kind of flip flopped and what they can do with their cores, but yeah. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't start messing around again until like way later, like, uh, 2008 ish. And I, I mean, I had a Mac mini after that and Man. I had, I had, well, I had a PC <laughs> and then I had a Mac mini, like uh, the Mac mini was just kind of the, the, the kind of just do everything like normal computer. Yeah. And then the other one that, you know, I could do gaming on and stuff like that. And then how did, I, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Keep going. 
No, finish your story, James. I haven't really, I haven't really built that much since then. I mean, it, it, I've bought a few computers and like gutted them. Like I've bought some stand, like full out in the box, made like you know, like a, I had a Lenovo that I you know gutted some parts out of it and then put some stuff into it that actually made a decent computer for cheap. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean. Uh, if if I were to do a computer again, and if I weren't going to do like something like a cool little Alienware box, I would you know do it completely from scratch, right? So, and it's just something I feel comfortable doing. It's just it's it's fun, but the only part I don't like about it is the wire stuffing. So, oh, I mean, cable I, I, you can, I need, yeah, just I hate cable management. It's like, gotten I mean, a lot it, better. It used it, to be uh, really. I mean, my ca- I mean, my case, I can run everything behind like a thing, yeah. so you don't even see much. But it's still. It's still the the least fun part about it. Well, I mean, the these most, days the most the most fun the most fun part is that first uh, that first launch. And it's like, oh wow, it's so clean. <laughs> it runs so fast. Yeah, when Windows boots in a couple of seconds, you're like, oh baby, are you on an <laughs> SSD yet? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you so you know that first time when you get that SSD plugged in, like, did that blow your mind? You're like, wait, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm uh, I'm in Windows and I can actually do stuff now. I am a full on evangelist for SSD. I mean, yeah. Oh man, change your when, life. When I first booted, I mean, I got I, you know you you create these habits, and I guess this would be kind of like one of those little gamer uh, quirks. Quirks is like I would start the computer up to you know to get ready to get into a game or whatever, and I would go like make a snack or make a drink, and then come back, and by the time I got back, then I'm you know ready to log in, and then it's ready to log in. But now I can barely get out of the room, and it's already it's there, it's 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 up and running. I'm like oh. Okay, this changes a little bit. I'm still going to get my drink, but that's cool. <laughs> so, um, so when you were like in college, you met Joel, right? Hmm. Uh, did you meet Joel through gaming or just through other means? No, it, it, it's weird. Joel and I—I I did not know Joel was a gamer until uh, four or five years after I knew him. It's weird. Like we just never talked about gaming and again. That was kind of the. A gamer, you a gamer? Let's keep it secret, type thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I met Joel. We were in the same uh, program. Uh, we were both studying uh, communications, uh-huh. and he was kind of the like. I did video, and I'd like to think I did it well, but no, not that people were that serious about it. I mean, you'd see people turning projects with like blue white balances and. You know, weird cuts. I was like, oh, you know, this isn't serious. But then, you know, I met Joel and I met uh, also this guy named Adam who was actually in the dorm with me, how I, which is how I met Joel. Wait, not, actually, not, not the Adam from... The the Adam. Re- really? Him? Yep. Oh, wow. And so, and so I knew, I, I met Adam. And then through Adam, I just met Joel. And we just, we started just hanging out and doing, you know, we did a couple of video projects together. And then we just did some really fun, stupid video projects together too i mean just uh documenting stupid things we were doing Mm -hmm. and then that you know that's how joel and i became friends and then you know when i actually worked at the college that i went to and and, in working there i got you know adam the the job as an intern there and so um but joel would come in and at the time he was dating his wife and they would come just sit and hang out on my you know the couch in my office (laughs) <laughs> um, and so, you know, we, we were we were good friends, and we were joking about ideas, and that was actually where we first started joking about Norman, which is funny. Um, this is like 2006. Yeah. Um, and so, but yeah, after after I moved, um, I moved away from there, and I moved to where I'm living now. Uh, Joel and I were just chatting online, and I don't know how it even came up, but we just started talking about games. Like, whoa, you play games? Like, you're a serious gamer? Like, seriously? Like, how did I not know that about you? And then it just kind of like, we're not ashamed anymore. We can be with each other. We're gamers. <laughs> My people. <laughs> so, well, so, now, from there, how did you come to join this group in the podcast? You know, I don't even remember how Joel brought it. I think, I don't know if Joel invited me for like, the purpose of this would be fun to do 
He invited you, know, you, you onto the podcast something? one night, like when we were really early on and didn't really have any structure. He's like, hey, my friend James is going to join us tonight. Not like Kenny, but like he's going to be on tonight. And I was like, all right. And then I think you didn't really talk much. I, don't, but, I had no clue what you guys were talking about. I mean, I didn't play any of the games you guys were playing. Like right. I, I, I didn't play the, the Arma mods. Mm-hmm. I didn't play Battlefield or anything like that. <laughs> so why'd you stay? I, I, I'm trying to think of why Joel. I, I think Joel might have invited me for backup. <laughs> if you know what I mean, for like that that you know that console enthusiast. Yeah. I mean, I, I did play a piece of games, but not not as much as you know console games. So I think Joel might have even put me in the corner just to, to help balance out the the console and the PC lovers. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, I stayed because it was just fun. It was just something that I'd never considered doing. Um, and you know, there, there's just something about, you know, I, I, I see podcasts, people do it professionally, like within their organization and it's cool. It's great. Um, you know, I think, but more for us, it's, it's just, I think it's an extension of friendship. Mm-hmm. Well, like, it's, it's I don't, a creation I, of friendship. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it literally is, but I don't stay because of, you know, I mean, I love the content. I love gaming. Right, but the content's about gaming. secondary. Yeah. Yeah, it's secondary. I stay because of the personalities. Like, I just, I like the interaction. You know, I mean, like, I mean, of course, I love the topics we talk about and stuff, but if anything, if we talked about something else, it would still, I'd still probably enjoy it. I mean, it would probably get to a point where I'd be like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to bow out this week if you guys are going to keep talking about, you know, what is that game you guys play? Total War? Yeah. We don't yeah, talk probably. about it that much, though. Right. But if you guys were talking about that every week, then I might say, all right, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's fun. I'll text Joel in the middle of the podcast. <laughs> uh, yeah, like that. But, like us talking about something else will stop you. <laughs> so what do you, what do you feel like you bring to the dynamic of the podcast? Because, you know, for a while, like we had kind of a rotating panel of hosts it was me and dave mm-hmm. definitely every week i think as dave has maybe missed one but i i haven't missed any of them um but for a while like we we rotated people a lot and then we slowly started getting the rotation nailed down to where now it's like it's definitely the four of us um yeah i, I think it was uh, gaming together honestly that really drew me into a wanted to be consistent with this mm-hmm. um because we've played games like Daisy and Arma together, um, and obviously since then we played, you know, like Payday and stuff like that. I think again that that extension of the friendship was kind of more the motivating factor, but also, um, you know, I, I do like the direction that it's going. You know, I th- and to answer the first part of your question, I think what I bring to the dynamic is the, number one the logistical you know, just thought process. I mean, being an analytical person, I'm thinking what makes X, Y, and Z good. How can we add structure to this? Mm -hmm. Um, And you guys have obviously been very gracious to kind of just take some of my ideas and see how they work. Um, Well, yeah, I mean, you're good at doing organizational stuff. Like you like everything to be organized. So if you pipe up and say, Hey guys, I think we ought to have like these folders to have Google docs in where we can sort it. And I think everyone's like, all right, well, even if we don't really get it, sure. You think it's a good idea. You're normally pretty spot on with this stuff. Let's do it. Like, I mean, we're a pretty easygoing group when it comes to stuff like that. We'll argue about it, but we'll all get on the same page pretty quickly. And that, um, and the, but that's the thing you don't necessarily get. And I mean, obviously you work at home, so you don't get that at all. You don't have to worry about that, but uh, I mean, well, I mean, I, I, I think, I think of in an organization where you have managers and then you yeah, have I don't have managers above them, day. above them. Yeah. You know, yeah. when you, when you come to the table with an idea, um, it's okay. That's a good idea, but let me run it by this person. And then this person has just no desire to actually change anything. So it just, it immediately flaws flat without actually testing it out to see if it can work. So it is cool to, to be able to just, as our group dynamic is, we trust each other to to make those kind of changes, make those kind of decisions that it, it, it that it is going to you know work out when it you know becomes fulfilled. Yeah. Um, other than that, I think I'm probably the sensible <laughs> sensible side of Joel, and <laughs> that I you know I, I you know was more of a console gamer, but I, I you know 
Whereas I think Joe can be, and I, t- I tell him all the time, he's a fanboy. Whereas he yeah. can be a fanboy about it. I at least try to, you know, say, well, maybe this could be this way or this way. You right. know, I'm kind of the I'm kind of the the, the neutral party. I, the way I see it is is Joel is on one end of the spectrum, Dave is on the other, and you and I are in the middle. You're on Joel's side of the fence, and I'm on Dave's side of the fence. But like we're m- closer to the middle, and they're definitely on the fringe, which I think gives the group a very good dynamic. Well, it, but it's at the same time it's fun for me knowing, you know, knowing about the fringe, you know, the fringe of the the two, yeah, and that I know how to you know egg them on to <laughs> keep it going, yeah, which you enjoy doing. I can hear I you do smiling enjoy right doing now, it. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I would say that, and then, you know, there's something to to gaming for all your freaking life, and almost all of console gaming's life. You know mm-hmm. that 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 matching up growing up with console gaming at least gives me a different perspective. Um, the good old days for me are the good old days when they were just starting. So, yeah, I bring and, that too. Yeah, I mean, at this point, it's like it's more about just getting to be a part of the culture than it is like. I'm interested in talking about games, even games. I'm not even, I never plan on playing Mm -hmm. just because I I like games are a part of my life. And I like just experiencing that culture. Same way. Like I like going to car shows and looking at other people's cars, or I like looking at electronic parts and reading about them and stuff like even stuff. I have never have any plans on getting, but like, I just, I enjoy being a a part of it and being around it. And yeah, I'm a little bit envious of you because like you have context that we don't have. When we're talking about, oh, maybe they'll do this, or maybe this is a smart move. Like you've been through all the different generations of of at least present day gaming um, as it is now. Right, and for someone like me, when they say you know Shenmue Three is coming out, like you know, I really get excited about that. Yeah, that means something to me because I played Shenmue when it was like innovative, and I was like, holy crap, this is this is so much different. I mean, they're really like giving you like a little life you can like live out and make choices and stuff. Whereas now, I mean, it's really like, it's, it's just, it's too corny now to go back and play. Yeah. I think. I mean, yeah some do, do you go back and, and play um, old games much or like, do you let, prefer to keep those as memories, fond memories? Yeah. I, I have my core group of games that I'll go back and play. Like I'll go back and play like Link to the Past and I'll go back and play like Super Metroid and stuff like that. And, you know, some Sega Genesis games. A few NES games, but I won't go back and play like a really in-depth game and pretend like it's still really, really good. Um, like I think my, you know, my some of my nostalgia. Like I go back, like oh, you know, that game really wasn't that great. Are there any games um, where you want to go back, but you don't because you're worried you're going to feel that way about it? Like you're you're going to be worried that you're going to start playing and then realize it's not that good, and you wish nah, you just kept it as a memory. There's nothing sacred to me, honestly. Really. Okay, because yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm definitely not like that. I mean, that's that's pretty cool. Man, well, I, I I'd, I'd be more like that with like I guess high school experiences than you know a game. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, just we'll give an example. Game. What do you mean by what do you mean by that? I mean, you you think of like you know in, in life you think about those high school experiences you had and you know the rose colored glasses for that, you know. You, you tend to forget the bad situations. You freaking tend to forget, you know, the stupid, you know, decisions you made. Whereas a game, you, you still remember the mechanic. You still remember having fun doing it. But I, I, for me, I can, you know, look at it and say, you know, thinking back, those mechanics aren't very good. You know, I think I just kind of like barreled through it because I just at least enjoyed the experience. Like, I mean, even now, like I'll, I'll play a game that isn't even really that great of game. But I still have a lot of fun playing it just because, you know, for X, Y, and Z reason. Like, you know, a game like Risen, which isn't a very good technically technical game. Like no, it's not at all. On the, R- on the RPG list, like, it's pretty crappy um, as far as not being broken and stuff. But, you know, you, you play it and you enjoyed it, and that's uh, that's what it's all about. And I mean, I don't look back and that's like, man, I love that game. That's such a good game. Like, no, nah, it wasn't a very good game, but it kept my attention for a long time. So I enjoyed that. And so I don't know, but there, yeah, there's, there's not really, no, no <laughs> games like that. That's, that's cool though. I mean, that's, I'm, I'm definitely a, a huge sucker for nostalgia. So I think it's cool that you can go back and revisit that stuff without it, like wrecking how you feel about it. 
Um, I mean, maybe, a big part of that too is I, I I still had a bunch of my old systems, mm-hmm. um, even till up and like you know several years ago, and so I still could play some of those old games and just be like, ah, that's crappy. You didn't even have to emulate them. You get the whole feeling of like plugging it in and booting it up. Like, I mean, I'm not going to say I'd never emulated a game because who doesn't want to play with smooth graphics and right higher resolution? But, but yeah, I mean, there 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 is something about holding that that little physical controller in your hand. Like it just plays differently. <laughs> and those I, older I, I, consoles still work too. That that also helps. Yeah, the SNES is just it, it will not break. Yeah. Yeah. So. Is there anything else you uh, you wanted to talk about? Any stories that I didn't ask the right questions for? Or? Um. All right. Uh, well, thanks, James. Thanks for coming out. Uh, thank you, everybody. Yeah. Make sure you go check out the rest of the interviews. I think this one will probably get uploaded last just because uh, I'm probably going to do them in order because um, I feel like we made enough cross-references to them that will make the most sense in order. But, uh, yeah, thanks for everyone coming out. Thank you for watching. And, as always, stay casual. <laughs>